Yo, yo, yo. What up, what up, what up, everybody? Ross Alex here. Hey, my friends, it's been a minute. It has been a minute. Too long. It's been so long that my hair is long. Look at this. Look at this wig. This is, this is, the, this is the product of not going to the barber in months. Can you believe it? I'm growing this thing out to my damn shoulders. Hey, listen, my friends, welcome to the broadcast. Welcome to the live stream. It feels good to live stream. I haven't, guys, I haven't live streamed in months. Literally, months. But I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you guys are fired up. Whatever it is that you're doing, I hope you guys are doing amazing. And I want to thank you so much for being here. If you're watching this on a replay, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment so I know that you stopped by. Uh, it would really mean a lot to me. So listen, tonight I had a presentation planned. I was teaching a course on how to get more deals, how to build real estate, deal flow, raise capital, how to go out and find buyers, how to build your own real estate website, like the whole nine yards, right? And uh, <laughs> I was so excited. We had so many people register for the event. And I go, I go live, I go on the event, and I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. And whenever I do a web webinar presentation, I always ask people, hey, make sure, drop a comment to let me know that you can hear me and see me so that I'm not just talking to myself. And, you know, it always yields a huge response because people want to interact and they're always like, yep, can hear you, can hear you. And, and I just heard crickets. I'm like, wait, what's going on here? Why, why, why is nobody interacting? Like, maybe something's wrong. Turns out my audio wasn't working the entire time. Luckily, I caught it before I went on too long or I would have delivered a silent presentation. That wouldn't have been good for anybody. But um, I'm super bummed. I'm super bummed. So if you were on the webinar and yeah, I apologize. I'm going to put a new date on the calendar. We're going to reschedule it and uh, make sure that I don't have any technical difficulties. Side note, I did send out a previously recorded session. So if you were one of those people that registered, you should have an email from me with a pre-recorded session. But anyhow, listen, I've been wanting to go live. I've been wanting to do a vlog. I've been wanting to do something, something uh, video related because man, I used to go live almost every single night and now I haven't in months. So I wanted to give you guys some a little, a little dose, a little dose of inspiration, some feel good stuff, some, some, you know, some motivation because I think right now we, a lot of people need it. Everything, of course, that's been going on has just been unprecedented, just been crazy. I mean, it's just been everything you hear nowadays, right? It's just bad, 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 bad. Who can relate to that? Who, who can, who can relate to that, right? Everything 2020 is just, I think we can all agree the worst year for a lot of people, <laughs> for a lot of people. Of course, some people, not so much, right? Like the saying goes, the rich get richer. You know, some people are coming out of this thing, you know, better than they were before. It's just the truth. Um, but for the most of us, 2020 has just been absolutely dog shit. It's been terrible. And um, it's, so, it's so easy to fall into that negativity trap, right? Especially with the mainstream media nowadays and social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's just bad, 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 bad. So I want to brighten up your day. I want to I I I shed some, some fire on you, right? So that you can get excited. Because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. If you want to build your business, you're going to need it. If you want if you, if you to make money, right? You have to be excited about what you're doing. So the title of this broadcast is What's the Worst That Can Happen? Okay. Now I've been in the business world, entrepreneurial space for seven years, right? And a lot of you guys know, I, I coach people, I help people make transformations. I help people get involved in real estate. I help people just completely change their situation. And whenever I meet somebody brand new, right? Brand new, they're, they're completely new to the entrepreneurial space. They're working a nine to five or a five to 12, or whatever it may be. And they, they recognize that they want to change, right? They recognize that they want to change stuff up. One of the biggest themes that I see from new entrepreneurs, right? Brand new is that they are afraid, right? They are afraid to get started because they think that blank is going to happen. 
And even if they've wanted to be in the space for years, they wanted to be rich. They grew up, they had fantasies of living the, the luxury lifestyle and traveling the world and buying the fancy cars and making millions of dollars. They've wanted it for so long, but they haven't done it yet, right? Until one day they finally have their fuck this moment because everybody does have a fuck this moment eventually. Uh, hopefully yours is sooner than later, right? But what a fuck this moment is, is basically you just realize that what you're doing is not making you happy. You're not feeling fulfilled. You're not living the life that you want to be living. You're not living the life that you know you're determined to to live and, and, and your destiny, you know, you're... you're you, you, you can do, be doing more, right? So you have a fuck this moment. You say, that's it. I'm out. I'm going to change up my game, right? But many times it's been weeks, months, years before that moment happens, right? And when that person actually gets started and they actually get involved in whatever it's doing, I'll relate it to real estate because I know a lot of you are in the real estate space. Whenever they get into their first deal or they start their first marketing campaign or they do their first fundraise, I always hear this from these types of people. It's like, wow, I should have did this sooner. I didn't know that it was this simple. I didn't know that I could do this. I didn't know that I could actually make this happen, right? Because that whole time, that whole time, and, and, and I might be speaking to somebody directly here that's watching this. The whole time that you're contemplating, you're procrastinating, you're putting things off, you're not living the life that you wanna live or doing whatever it is that you wanna be doing, because you think that this is gonna happen and that's gonna happen and all these bad things, right? Well, I, I encourage you, I encourage you to, to use this mindset, right? Instead of asking yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? Ask yourself, what's the best thing that could happen, right? Yes, of course, in real estate, you could lose 25 grand, but what if you make 50, right? You could completely bomb a deal and it can go terribly wrong. But what if it goes amazing? What if it goes great? Listen, my friends, you cannot live your life, okay? Especially as an entrepreneur, you cannot live your life asking yourself about all of the possible bad things that can happen. And here's why. If you, if you dwell, right? If you dwell on everything that can go wrong, right? With whatever it is that you want to do, it doesn't even have to be real estate, right? Whatever it is that you want to do, if all you think about is what could go wrong, you are going to develop an analysis paralysis that's going to prevent you from taking any action, right? You ever hear the tire kickers, right? The people that, that just go around and around and around in the hamster wheel, even though they're great inside, even though they have literal greatness, right? Everybody has greatness in them. They know that they could be doing more. They don't. They don't, right? Because they get comfortable in their own mind and their limiting beliefs prevent themselves from taking action, all right? Their limiting beliefs prevent them from getting started, right? Listen, back in March, I started up a podcast. I have over 50 interviews. I've never done podcasts before. I'm not an interviewer, right? I'm not 60 Minutes. I'm not Larry King. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I've never, I never went to school for journal, journalism. I don't know the right questions to ask, but you know what? I just did it, right? I just did it. I, I didn't think about it. I just did it, right? It's the screw it, just do it mentality. I just did it. Now I'm 50 episodes in and people are actually telling me that they enjoy the podcast, right? Because that's something that I wanted to do. Think about this for yourself. I know that everybody watching this right now has something that they want to do, but they're afraid to do, whether it's public speaking, whether it's going on a live stream, whether it's uh, writing a book, whether it's making an offer on a property, buying a deal, doing a fundraise, whatever it is for you, right? Going to the gym, whatever. Everybody has that one thing that they're afraid to do, right? My friends, instead of thinking what's the worst thing that can happen, think about what's the best thing that can happen. Yeah, I could have thought, hey, well, if I do this podcast, what if people laugh at me? What if people make fun of me? I mean, I'm coming to you. My hair's damn near growing a weed, touching my shoulders. Yeah, you guys can make fun of me, but I'm like, you know, well, what if someone likes the hair? What if somebody likes the long hair, right? What if I, I, I trimmed up the beard, but the beard was growing like a freaking bush, what if somebody likes it, right? I mean, hey, it's not gonna stop me from, from doing the things that I wanted to do, right? And I don't want that to stop you from doing the things that you want to do, okay? So listen, if you want to do anything in your life, whatever it is, anything in your life, screw it, just do it. Don't 
be your own worst enemy. Don't hold yourself back. Don't always dwell on, well, what if this happens? And what if that happens, right? Too much bullshit nowadays. Too much noise. Too much, too much static in the atmosphere, right? Everybody's, you know, just all over the place. And listen, my friends, if you want to be a real winner, if you want to make real money, you want to make real impact, you want to really feel fulfilled inside, okay? You have to live the life that you want to live. You have to design the lifestyle that you want for yourself, right? The one that you thought about as a kid, when I get older, I'm going to be doing this because here's the truth. This is the truth. Let me know. Are you guys with me? Drop a one right now in the chat so I know that you guys are here. Drop a one right now. Everybody here. Everybody drop a one in the, in the comments because here's the truth, right? In life, right, this thing called life, there is no replay. There's no replay button. Like, and, and, and I've said this a thousand times. It might be cliche. You might have heard it a thousand times. But not enough people live their lives believing that, right? Like, they always think that they have time. One of the biggest, the biggest fallacies, the biggest bullshit statements that anybody has ever said to themselves or crafted up is you've got time. Right? You heard that you heard that as a kid. You've got time. You've got your whole No, that's not true. That's fake. That's what they want you to think. So that you get complacent, you get comfortable. Nobody has time because time is never promised. Right? I could be gone tonight. I could be gone five minutes from now. And the same with you. The same with everybody, right? So when once you stop believing that you always have this endless amount of time and that life, there's no replay button, there's no do-over, there's no pause. All right, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? You have to live the life that you wanna live. You have to do the things that you wanna do. When I bought my first house, I, I never, I dropped out of college twice. I barely graduated high school. I didn't know anything about buying a house. I didn't know anything about renovating a house, redoing a kitchen, redoing floors. I had no, I had no clue what I was doing, but I asked myself, I said, well, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? I lose money, cool. Sucks, nobody wants to lose money, right? But money comes and goes, right? Money's everywhere, money is abundant. It's all over the place. If you lose money, you can make more back. All right, next. What if I get up in, uh, in front of an audience and I'm speaking, right? And I get laughed at. Okay, well, you get laughed at and uh, you go home and you forget about it the next day, right? Or you figure out how to improve or you figure out why you were laughed at or you just laugh with the people that were laughing and then you just move on and you do it again, right? And th seriously, right? You want to write a book, right? I know a lot of people want to write books, right? You want to write a book, but you're nervous. People are going to be critical of you. People are going to maybe they might not like it. Maybe they might make fun of you because you have grammatical errors in it, whatever it may be, right? Okay, you publish the book, right? What's the absolute worst thing that can happen? People don't buy it. People don't read it. People don't enjoy it. Okay, cool. There's millions of people that create content that didn't perform well, right? Artists, look at artists. Artists today, paintings and art pieces that sell for millions and millions and millions of dollars. At one point, people were poking fun at, right? I mean, come on. What's the worst thing that can happen? Ask yourself that. A business deal, right? Business deal. Now, of course, of course, with every every lesson, there's always the, well, what if this and what if that, okay? So I, I, I encourage you guys to always operate with the most integrity, the ethics, you know, be ethical, have morals. Of course, you should never go ever into a business deal or a transaction, you know, being unethical and saying, well, what, oh, what's the worst that can happen? Oh, I lose this person's money. I lose their, for, their Roth IRA, their 401k. What's the worst? No, no. You don't want to put yourself in those types of situations, right? That's why business owners and investors, we take calculated risks, right? Calculated risks. We know what we're doing before we do it. You should never get in over your head, all right? Full disclaimer here before people take my words out of context, like Dr. Fauci right now. All right, don't Dr. Fauci me. Context is key, okay? Yes, there are unethical ways of doing things. However, for the purpose of this conversation, Ask yourself, what is the worst thing that can happen? Because a lot of times, right? A lot of times our fears, I do this a lot. I don't know why. Cash flow. 
Who digs the hat? You dig the hat? 10X, baby. Card on capital. Listen, a lot of times our fears, they're all, they're BS. They're fake. They're fake. It's our own mind playing tricks on us, trying to stop us from being fulfilled. They're not real. They're not real. A lot of times our fears are not real, okay? It, let's bring it back to when you're a kid. You're afraid of what's under the bed, right? Every kid goes through this stage. You think something's under your bed, right? Till one day you get enough courage and you look under the bed and there's nothing there. There's literally nothing there, right? You go to a theme park, you're so excited, you go to Six Flags, you walk up to this huge roller coaster and you're terrified. You're deathly afraid to go on this roller coaster, right? Your friends encourage you, you talk yourself into it, whatever the case may be, you go on the roller coaster. What happens after you get off the roller coaster, all right? You want to do it again. You realized it wasn't as scary as you thought it was and you worked yourself up and you drove yourself crazy because you thought that it was going to be this and that and this and that, but you enjoyed it, right? What's the worst thing that could happen? My man, Cody Mack, putting your life savings into multiple projects for another contractor. That's what they're all done. Then they say, well, we've decided we aren't going to pay you. So we'll see you in court. Then can't find an attorney to take your case. That's bad. Of course, that's bad. But let me tell you something that my mentor taught me, okay? This is something my $100 million mentor taught me, all right? And I live my life by this and it's just made all the difference for me, right? Learn how to move on, okay? Whenever I go to my mentor and I think that my world is collapsing, okay? I think that everything is going bad. By the way, I'd appreciate it if you, if you hit the like button on this broadcast, if you're enjoying this little chat. When I think that my world is falling and I have anxiety at night and my chest feels like it's closing and I can't breathe and I'm sweating and I feel like I'm getting palpitations and I'm freaking out, right? When I feel like that, okay, and I go to my mentor and I start just dumping my thoughts like this and this and this and this, like a therapist, right? You know what he tells me? He tells me, move on. Gotta move on. Because the world doesn't stop spinning. Life goes on. Life goes on, okay? Now, I want you, of course, it sucks losing money. It sucks getting ripped off. Of course it does. We've all been there, right? Most of us have been there. Most of us have been in those situations where it feels like our life is over. Whether it's a breakup, you get laid off, fired, whatever it may be. But when you look back, you realize, wow, I got all worked up for this, but now look at me, right? I'm doing better. When emotions are high, okay, intelligence is low, all right? I want you guys to remember this one. It's something my mentor literally just instilled in me. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never forget this, okay? When emotions are high, intelligence is low. We make bad decisions. When we're emotional, we make impulsive, poor decisions. We're not thinking rationally and logically about the situation because we're, we're in that frenzy right? We're acting on emotion. And when emotions are low, intelligence is high. We're calculated. We're sharp, right? We're logical. We're, we use rationale, right? To, 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 to work through situations, to push through, right? What's the best possible angle of attack here, right? Whether you're, be, you're getting sued, you're in a lawsuit, right? You're behind on taxes. You have a deal that ran out of money. Like, your, your, your spouse left you, what, whatever it may be. Like, what is the best possible strategy for me here, all right? So in that same situation, okay, Cody, talking to you, bro. In that situation, okay, you need to find out how to bring your emotions down so that you can use your intelligence, right? And you can actually work through that situation because here's the truth. Every problem out there has a solution, okay? And if you haven't found it yet, you, you, you have to keep, keep looking for it. Every problem has a solution, okay? Every problem. I've been, I, I've, I've been there. I've been there. Like I talk, I speak my truth and I love to be transparent. I've lost money on deals. Like, yeah, I'm in it. Like a lot of people don't like to talk about that in the real estate space because they, they're, they're insecure and they have this belief 
that if they lose, that people won't like them anymore. People won't think they're legitimate anymore. Like, no, that's not true. Every real estate investor eventually will lose money on a deal. Investing is a risky business to be in. It's calculated risk, but it happens, right? Stuff happens, markets happen, coronavirus happens, right? Shit happens. I had to move on, right? If I spend all of my time dwelling on the fact that I lost X amount of dollars, it's going to literally take me away from building business and doing more deals, right? If I lose money on one deal, I need to go in 10X and do five profitable deals and I won't even be thinking about that last deal I lost money on, right? If I, if I do a public speaking event and I get laughed at, I need to go do 10 events to make sure that I do one and I don't get laughed at. So that, that one event that didn't go well for me, eh, I'm not even worried about it anymore, right? If I write a book and it doesn't perform well, then I need to improve my game and write another book that's going to perform well. Not everything you're gonna, you, you do in life is going to be a home run, okay? But like Mark Cuban says, you only need to be right once. You only have to be right once. I want you to really, really think about that. You only have to be right one time. There's this guy going around on TikTok, on CNN, on NBC, on YouTube, this guy named Dogface. He did a video of him on a skateboard drinking cranberry juice, right? Who, who has seen that video? Comment if you've seen that video. Drop a yes, my hand just fell asleep because I'm holding this, I'm, I'm, I'm selfie sticking it right now. <laughs> my hand is literally sleeping. Holy smokes. Who's seen that video? I got a one-handed. If you go on that guy's page, okay, first of all, that guy, the guy went mega viral, right? Like probably is the most viral superstar of 2020. The guy lives in a trailer in Idaho, I believe, right? Works in a factory. If you go look, that man has at least a hundred videos, a hundred videos before the one that made him viral, famous, okay? Not every video performed well. He didn't get national coverage or worldwide coverage on every video, but he was only right once. It only took one video to change his life. Ocean Spray gave him a truck. He's made thousands and thousands of dollars, brand deals, interviews on TMZ. I mean, the guy's life has literally changed from one video because one video worked and he only had to be right one time. Okay, it doesn't matter if his other 300 videos didn't do well, he was right one time. Okay, in business, it's the same way. It doesn't matter if you fail 200 times. If you're right once, one time, you hit a grand slam, it's, it's all that matters. It doesn't matter how many times you failed, right? It just doesn't. So listen, at the end of the day, ask yourself, what is the worst What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Am I going to let that one thing stop me from doing whatever it is that I want to do? Because I promise you, when you actually do it and you get past your own head and you get past the limiting beliefs that you have and you actually do whatever it is that you've been wanting to do, you're going to look back and you're going to, you're going to laugh at yourself. You're going to be like, you're going to be like, I can't believe, I can't believe it took me that long. I can't believe it took me that long to, to do this thing, right? To buy this house or to, 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 to write that book that I've always wanted to write, okay? I'm gonna leave you with this one, all right? I'm gonna leave you with this. Gary Vee says this all the time. It's the, one of the, my favorite ever statements. Ideas are worthless unless executed upon, my friends. Listen, I know I'm brain dumping, but it's important that I get this out. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you have, if you had the idea for Uber. It doesn't matter if you have, uh, if you had the idea for Facebook or if you created this thing in your head and it turns out that it came out to be uh, the TV. It doesn't matter, okay? Because an idea is worthless unless you execute upon it, unless you actually make it real, okay? You think the people that own DoorDash and Uber were the first people in the world to think about a service like that? No. 
You think Netflix was the, the founders of Netflix were the only people, the first ever people to think about a video streaming service? No, they weren't, okay? But they were the ones that took action. They were the ones that actually did it, all right? Think about that, all right? So whatever ideas you have, whatever it is that you want to do, take action on it. Do it. Make it real. Make it, make it real. Because if you don't, somebody else will. Somebody else that's gotten past that fear, that voice in their head, okay? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Listen, it's my first live stream back. Thank you. Listen, it would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot. I don't even know if you guys like these live streams. I don't even know who cares if people care or not. Honestly, I don't. But if you do like this stuff, if you do enjoy the content, you want more, you want me to go live again, I used to go live every night. I don't know. Uh, just leave me leave me a comment here. Drop a yes or an emoji or something. That, that'll just let me know that you guys even enjoy this type of content because um, I took months and months and months off and it's just been burning at me and itching at me. And I'm like, you know what? I want to go live. But what if they don't like the hair that's down to my shoulders? Oh, well. Oh, well. What's the worst that can happen? Hey, you guys are great. I'm Ross Alex, and uh, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.